This is from Colin Rugg. He says, just an NFL quarterback, Patrick Mahomes' wife, releases a statement after liking one of Trump's Instagram posts. Brittany Mahomes is, un- Mahomes is under fire by leftists for liking Trump's platform on Instagram. Brittany appears to now be defending her support for Trump, blasting the haters for not healing from issues they had from childhood. <laughs> Quote, to be a hater as an adult, you have to have some deep rooted issues you refuse to heal from childhood. There's no reason your brain is fully developed and you hate to see others doing so well. Uh, epic. <laughs> so this is Brittany's response. She had liked Trump's 2024 GOP platform. They're losing their minds. Look at that. Liked by Brittany Lynn. Bravo. Now, this is, of course, pre, you know, before the RFK Jr. endorsement. But this is what I'm talking about. More people publicly endorsing Trump's positions. And you know what? I, I, I'm surprised. A lot of people get attacked like this and they apologize immediately. Like, oh, no, I, I, my, my finger slipped on the button. Mm-hmm. And she's like, shut up. <laughs> it's great. I really like that she has an apology for it. Uh, but she's actually, but the media hates this girl. She hangs out with ah, Taylor Swift now good. because they're, her husband and, and uh, Travis Kelsey are on the same football team. And they, everything she does, they hate. Everything she wears, they hate. Like, And it makes me think, it kind of makes you tough enough to be like, well, I'm not going to hide my politics then. Like, If so, you don't like me already, I'm going to be honest with who I am. So wait, she hangs out with Taylor Swift? Yeah. What if Taylor Swift is secretly based? Wouldn't it shock I'm me? just saying, you know? Swifties for Trump, and et cetera. Well, they what, tra- if, what if Travis converted her? <laughs> She's a hardcore maggot. I, I, I don't know. I think this is why I'm, you know, I always tell people, like, stop attacking people who haven't, the, even if Taylor Swift came out and she, she had those cookies or whatever for the Democrats or whatever, even if she made the endorsement, you don't insult, attack, you persuade, you say, aw, like I'm a big fan, I wish you would you know, sit down with us, and you try to win them over. You don't do what the left does and insult and attack people. I think going back to your point about why RFK Jr. Uh, is such an interesting attack vector with this endorsement is exactly that, that these people that have not been woken up yet, they have been propagandized so aggressively that the Democrats are the defenders of democracy, and that if you don't support them, then you're basically supporting fascism. RFK Jr. comes out and very eloquently states that, in fact, it's the complete inversion of the of the truth, that the DNC closed off the primaries and they ultimately uh, palace cooed Trump out of power, or not Trump, but the, they did that to Trump too, but they <laughs> palace cooed Biden out of power and then foisted Kamala Harris onto, uh, onto the, the Democrat voters. It's it's a powerful, compelling argument that really dismantles the top narrative they've been running on, defending democracy. You guys don't believe in it. Mm-hmm. I think people need to realize, too, that there are there are still middle of the road people who are not deeply indoctrinated. Of course, that can be exposed to the truth. If they're surrounded by the right people, we can spread this message. RFK makes a big move in that direction. So we have to try and be as persuasive as we can to as many people as possible. That being said, we also need to be wary that there are evil people who will seek to exploit you and lie to you. Act these, these political pundits online who you know, they know the truth already, but say the opposite. And regarding like political moderates, that's young people in general. Like all the people that are young have not yet been indoctrinated. They have not chosen their path. And that's constant. Forever, there will always be new people that are ready to learn. So that's people like Bobby teaching them. I gotta I gotta read this super chat from Space is Cool Man. It's too it's too perfect. He says Brat Summer, nuclear winter. <laughs> that is a good anti Kamala slogan right there. No, it is. I mean Kamala Harris is not the person we want negotiating anything, right? Like, I get it. Biden Biden administration brought her out to represent some sort of diversity role and to, you know, wave and dance when need be. But they didn't even trust her with anything. They made her the border czar and then sort of shunted her to the side. Like, no one wants Kamala Harris representing them, including Democrats. That's why they didn't pick her the first chance they had. For all the gamers out there, I would give Kamala a 14 charisma if you play mm-hmm. D&D with zero persuasion and maybe like two points in intimidation 14 charisma I, I, she has charisma enough to be a politician yeah no she yeah she bro. Let, you see all those people screaming and dancing that's why she's done so many interviews that's not her that's that's the but everyone else at the, the event kind of cute it's commercial. like she's pretty enough to have charisma it helps her charisma so like 14 if she had charisma, no. she why is she not doing her charisma interviews? because she has no persuasion did you, did you, skill did she did has you see very how, low intimidation skill she's michael, not a good speaker michael malice she's exemplified not very intelligent. this malice exemplified this so well at the end of yesterday's episode as to why he doesn't want to listen to kamala harris and he was like, because I can say something sincere, like me saying, oh, I'm, I'm really excited to uh, listen to you guys on the members only show. I think it's going to be good fun. And if Kamala Harris has it, it's I'm so excited to hear you on the members only show. Like, that's not she, she lacks charisma. Now, I wouldn't give her zero. No, yeah, she gets a you know, bonus to her career. Seven or eight. 
I don't think so. Willie Brown thought she was hot. Uh, yeah, oh, come on. I think she gets a bonus plus two to her charisma. And, but the thing is, I think Michael doesn't want to listen to her because if you listen to an evil person with charisma, you can get indoctrinated into their evil ways. No, so he's like, he doesn't even want good anything. at it. She has no persuasion. She has zero in persuasion. She has no persuasion skill, which gives you bonus on top of, and she has some intimidation skill. <clears throat> like she'll be like, you want Trump to win? And you're like, oh, well, no. No, my my lady, no. Like, but she's just has low int- like twelve intelligence, I eight, I, eleven intelligence, maybe. I, I disagree. I disagree, Ian. Th- if if this was true, they'd put her on TV more. Well, if she like Trump's she had, got like eighteen charisma with like a sixteen points in persuasion. He's super charismatic and persuasive, but she yep. has like no persuasion ability. They won't and, they, and a moderately she, okay. She inspires charisma. no one. A I know charisma. Someone and who inspires people. Good. To, but she inspires no. no one. That's why they well, won't put her on TV. She won't do of, interviews. I feel like she only uh-huh. inspires people. That's who commercials don't. promoting the DNC, and those are delegates who are brought in. That's like saying, does the does the the cult leader have to be charismatic to his zealots? Not if not, yeah, not if the leader's yeah. installed by commercials and television. The reason they won't have her do interviews is because she does not have charisma. There's low intelligence. That's she can't the speak. Doesn't do the interviews. <laughs> she can't well, speak that's ex- extemporaneously. She's like she's incapable of doing it. And and honestly, I think her her blood alcohol content has been higher consistently over the past three years than she polled in 2020. <laughs> I'm being totally honest too. I, 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 I that genuinely believe she was a, okay. She's a drunk. No, she is would be true? dead. No, well, oh no, yeah, no, no, sorry, you have to do the point, yeah, but I think, like, she pulled it 2%, okay, I think so she's, saying, she's rocking point two. Decimal, con- <laughs> yes, if you, if you swing the decimal one. It's like, dude, yeah. for, uh, 20, no. 29% <laughs> blood alcohol content is not something uh, to survive. You're, you're right about that, yeah. <laughs> is that true that she has a drinking problem? Is well, this- how could I know? Okay, I don't but people have been suggesting it online. I've been seeing. Is it just well, because I bloodshot eyes or look, something? I've, I've partied enough in my day to to recognize when someone's uh, a couple of a couple of glasses of wine deep. She seems like she's consistently that, or it's pills, or worst case scenario, she's an imbecile. I don't know which. You combine all three, she still shouldn't be elected. Yeah, I don't. I, what were you gonna say? Well, I was gonna go back first. Kamala Harris is only persuasive persuasive to people who have not paid attention in the last three and a half years and to people who don't know anything about politics because when i was watching her speech last night if i was just stepping back objectively and i didn't know anything about her i'd be like okay like she's got some charisma because she's decent when she's in front of a teleprompter she's not good at speaking off the cuff she's not good at answering questions so that's why she's not going to do interviews it said it was easier for her to do the meme approach like the whole brat summer thing like that was a desperate way of trying to win over gen z because the thing is is gen z is like the first generation that has grown up knowing to not trust the media because other generations, it took them quite a few years of being lied to to finally recognize that if it's on legacy media, there's a good chance that it's a blatant lie. Her her speech, her acceptance speech was probably at, at most, probably a quarter of RFK's speech today. Mm-hmm. And it seemed to me that he was ad-libbing much of that. Um, In and, length, do you mean? Yeah. A quarter? Yeah. Was, half right, of it, it was, was her saying thank you. Well, it was... Three to four minutes of it, it felt like it was a applause lines in the, just to mm-hmm. in the beginning, and then she spends ten minutes talking about her heritage and just trying desperately to convince the American people that she is in fact African American. I don't know why that's such a and relatable, such an important right? point to make, and then and then relatable, and then she's a prosecutor, and you know it's like. I, there was there was so little vision for what she actually wants to deliver to the country, and when she finally got to it, it was just purely a funhouse, uh, you know, mirror image of the inverse of Donald Trump. It's like everything that you have to say is just counter him, and and your vision of him is uh, is contrived. It's it's not actually grounded in reality. It's a straw man. So if it if it works on anybody. I don't understand how. It's the Her- smiling and laughing. that They do a lot of smiling and laughing yeah. at that DNC, which is really disturbing. Like, the economy's not in a good place. It's not time to laugh and smile, guys. Like, get serious. Just, and just also se- a severe lot of inflation, that, um, $35 trillion in debt, $1 trillion in uh, annual interest payments alone, the, multiple proxy wars. They do that, um, that <laughs> let's, let's all laugh and drink. They keep doing this. Uh, Michelle Obama's doing They talking like this when they're talking. It's like, who the hell? Just talk normal. Oh, talk to the AOC people. does it. I, I agree. Myself. It's the worst when AOC so does it. She really gets into it like this. She's <laughs> Every- got some good hand gestures. She's really yeah. a female politician. Top politician. Um, Trump spoke for almost two hours at the RNC, right? Yep. Kamala Harris barely ordered Taco Bell with the like, her, her <laughs> speech. I mean, it is crazy to me that this is their candidate. She has this big moment. She's primed for it. And I honestly think Joe Biden would have spoken for longer. And that's amazing because he yeah. every speech he gave got shorter and shorter. I mean, shorter. When, when we, I'm sure all of us at this table have said this at some point, the more she talks, the more she loses. And, and they know this, and it couldn't be more obvious. I would not be surprised if they told 
who I don't know if they have applause signs in the amphitheater or if they just told people like higher ups or, or people in control of each section. Look, we are going to give her the longest applause break in human history, just as she takes the stage, because we only have her plan to talk for 15 minutes. We want three minutes of that to be applause. And then every time she says anything remotely good, we want another standing ovation by us 20 more seconds. I mean, I bet if you counted it, she said like maybe a thousand words. It was, it was embarrassing. They bounced those signs up and down. Right, right, right. Like the, the, the people hyped or something. Yeah. It's it like a hype. Hyped- to make it look really busy and full. 200 of those words were thank you, Mike. Like, I just really want to hone in on that. Yes. If you watch the beginning of her speech, it was thank you, thank you, thank you. Like, she went on with that for a solid two minutes. And part of the breaks, too, I keep saying this. Kamala Harris has social anxiety. I know a nervous laugh when I hear one. Yeah. And I'm sure you guys heard about, like, the rapid turnover she was having with her staff. Well, if you listen to what a lot of her staff members said, is that every time that there was a big event or somewhere that she had to show up for, she would make her staff pretty much do, like, a rehearsal of, like, let's say I was walking into this room and she would have her staff sit in all the seats that you guys would so that she could just pretend on how she would have conversations with these different people. She has no confidence in herself. She's an extreme extremely insecure yet dangerously ambitious politician who keeps getting put into these positions to let other people do the work she's just the face yep. she doesn't want to be anything beyond that we were watching her speech uh we were doing a simulcast on infowars with roger stone uh, myself luke and alex jones and alex is just like at, during that applause break he just goes you ever going to talk <laughs> bunch of communists <laughs> he's just like he, i thought he was gonna have a total mental breakdown it was hysterical Thanks for watching this clip from TimCast IRL. Make sure to check out the live show Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. on this channel. Subscribe and we'll see you all there.